From the social media perspective, I think it's been very interesting that uh, we have to really figure out how this media can bridge the relationship between student and learner. It was interesting in that sort of unconference, they talked about how the learners uh, would not really communicate very well when they knew that the students were, um, and the teachers were also seeing what was going on. So this whole sense of still being private, uh, figuring how to communicate, I think is a challenge that we all uh, need to have. It's certainly a powerful tool that the students can learn to be uh, peer mentors for one another. Uh, I think there is still some work to be done to see how we as educators can learn best how to integrate and, and work within that, uh, that media and make the students uh, uh, feel comfortable. Of course, there's continuing uh, warnings that uh, young people uh, tend to be a little bit brash about uh, some of their behaviors, uh, and I think as uh, professionals, we all need to understand that what we do in our youth uh, still may impact our reputation um, in the future. So there probably is some etiquette that needs to be um, conveyed to the students and how they make public uh, some of these social uh, media activities. Kind of moving on to sort of the work that I've been doing at the VA, which is looking a little bit differently at uh, e-learning and other kinds of activities from what Medbiquitous has been traditionally doing, which is focusing on the medical student and young learner. So the VA simulation project, we're really focusing on the VA workforce. So from a perspective of what um, Medbiquitous is doing, it's like how now do we take these virtual patient um, modalities and make it relevant for workers, for the people that are not learning initially but have some uh, some expertise but need to have refined expertise, or more importantly, how can we use these things uh, as tools to give just-in-time education for what may have been a discussion about a event that didn't go well, some new procedure that's going to be introduced, how do we use these technologies to teach people um, about new medications, uh, new procedures, new policies that may not have been what they learned uh, in medical school. So as part of that effort, I think the real uh, expertise that all of us have in this room can really be directed to seeing how we can use this technology and develop tools that the novice IT person can really use to immediately get out content that can be useful. So one of the models that we're thinking about is to develop uh, at, the net, at the 23 networks that the VA has, a small group of people that can turn around a virtual patient very quickly in response to some event at the hospital, whether it be something that went well or something that went poorly, and we really want to educate the staff. So that's kind of a new way to use um, some of this technology. Uh, additionally, when you think about a hospital systems that are distant from medical centers, you also have to understand that some of the other technologies that are very common in medical centers, like simulation devices, whether they be task screeners or mannequins, uh, are not well dis disseminated and there are not a lot of people around in remote places that really know how to use this equipment. So we've really taken a, a very strong look at Rachel's work in terms of how can we network a whole hospital system so that we can deliver education through mannequins, through virtual patients, through other kinds of uh, electronic activities, but yet control them in a central point, and yet still make the experience uh, very real for the learner. So I, I would challenge the next step for virtual patients and for other activities uh, at Medbiquitous to think beyond just the, uh, the medical student, but to see how can we now apply these kinds of very important tools to the workforce out there, because Real continued learning uh, really has to reach out to all professionals and not just the initial uh, student. Thank you.